welcome back to my country craft corner how in the world are you guys doing today it is so good to see you again and thank you so so much for stopping back by to see what i'm up to and what i'm up to today is i'm going to reveal this little secretary here that was my grandmother's i'm going to tell you what i've done with it then we're going to make a bow and i'm going to put it bring it back out here at the end and put it right there uh, but we will have a bow tutorial in this video today and then I'm going to answer your questions because I've got a bunch of questions but I thought I would start out here uh, the secretary this piece of furniture was my grandmother's and then it was my mom's and now it is mine and I mean we could restain it we could paint it we could do all sorts of things to this, but we've decided to leave it natural and as it was made because it's still in really good shape. But as you can see, I do style it with the door open. And I, we have a little store around here called Dottie's Den. And years ago, I saw her styling a secretary with her big door open. And I was like, why didn't I ever think of that? Well, I went home and figured out in my other house where I had this sitting and the only place I could set it in the house was a place where I, I didn't have room to open the door. So I didn't wasn't able to open the door until we moved this piece of furniture into this house. So that's when I started opening the door and styling, you know, the inside, if you will, of the desk. And then Chris just added the lights and he, these are USB lights that you can find in my uh, Amazon storefront, but they do come only with one USB plug thing, but you can split them like he did my, you know, the battery operated uh, candles. And you can do it that way if you want. And you can refer back to that video, which is always linked in my uh, description box. So I got started uh, decorating this last night. As I said, I'm not gonna be doing Decorate With Me's this week uh, because I'm still kind of recovering from a fall I took last week. So I'm going to just tell you what I've done here and uh, let you know that the only thing that's new for this whole vignette is I bought this Faith Does Not Make Things Easy, It Makes Them Possible sign couple weeks ago and then I also purchased these three little plates anyway nothing else is new in here this is all other th things that I've had through the years Stacy made me that piece of wood there you can see and uh, in peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone Lord make me dwell in safety Psalm 4-8 and that's our house when it was brand new, even before they painted the door. And uh, she made that for me. So a little touch of my cousin Stacy in here. And uh, gifts in here. One of you guys gave me this piece of, of milk glass. And uh, everything else I've had. These two little, these are actually all vases that I've just have sitting in there just for the pop of color because I will close the doors. I'm not gonna put any florals in the vases. I just want the blue. I just want the pop of color. This is a placemat that we've cut into three sections. Chris actually cut them for me. And he was so precise, he wanted me to point out that he actually did them all the same so that the dark blue would be pointed <laughs> out. He's very picky. You think I'm picky? He's picky. This was one of my grandma's gravy boats and her salt and pepper shakers. And uh, I think it turned out really cute. Just not a lot of stuff, but enough to give a nod to the blue and white. And uh, also to remember some folks that are very special to me. Chris and I got the, the polar bears from Disney World, I believe one year. We made a trip down there and was in one of the shops in Disney World. I believe that's where we got those. And uh, then I just took this little, I got this little tray from the Minuteman Mini Mall last year, I think. And I just have a little blue vase sitting in it with just some ivy and hydrangea and some blueberries in there. And then expect nothing and appreciate everything. 
Then I just have a couple little bunnies, a placemat. I have these linked in my Amazon shop too, I believe. And I found that little candlestick again at the Minuteman Mini Mall, I believe. No, I'm, I'm fibbing. I got that at Two Times New, which is another store here in town. And you can see that this is pretty beat up. This was well used. My grandmother used this to do her bills on and everything else. And this is a melamine plate. So, and then the two little bunnies. I have no idea where I got the bunnies, you guys. I really don't. But anyway, we're going to close this up now. And uh, I have to take this down in order to close it up. And we're going to head out to the kitchen. Here we go. You can see it's really pretty in the evening hours. And there we go. That is a half of a garland that is going across the top there from Hobby Lobby. And then you can see I've got two swag pieces hanging down. And then I'm going to make a blue and white bow right there. So. All right, let's head out to the kitchen. And uh, we'll grab my computer up on the way because I need that. And got my light ring out here and the battery. And that's where I came in and plopped down my purse and my mask. So I will be right back. I'm going to get myself a cup of tea here. And I will be right back in just a minute and say hello to you face, face to face. And we'll get started making a bow and answering some questions. Good to see you again on this Monday, you guys. All right, here be right I am back. back out at my island here in my house. <laughs> I hope you liked what I did with that secretary. I mean to tell you, I stood there and I looked at it last night and I had, I had a bunch of pioneer woman stuff in there. But it was like not what I'm going for, you guys. It was just not what I'm going for. I really want to pull the blue and white everywhere throughout except for one place. And that is in my pretty in pink, that little hutch of my grandmother's. Uh, everywhere else, Inside the hutches, outside the hutches, on all the tabletops and it, walls and everywhere. I want it to be a cohesive blue and white design all the way throughout. So I pulled everything out of there last night, walking around in my in my night clothes. <laughs> pulled them out here, put them on the table. Chris says, what are you doing? I said, I said, just leave me alone. I'm having an epiphany right now. <laughs> he goes, oh, he goes, okay. So I cleaned everything out. I cleaned off all the shelves. He ended up cutting, like I said, cutting the placemat up for me. And then I just started gathering things around that I thought I might want to put in there. And I was stumped for the longest time with those uh, vases. I was like, I really want to use this one vase. And I had those other, to the two thinner vases, they fit down into a metal uh, holder. And the metal holder, because it's up on like little feet, it, they wouldn't fit in there. So I was like, so I took it out of the little metal holders. And I was like, all right, well, we're just going to set them in there and see if they fit. And they did. They fit. And uh, for just a pop of blue, you know, just a pop of that cobalt blue, you know. And once I got those three pieces set, the three uh, vases set, then the rest of it came together pretty easily. And I just started setting stuff here and there. But anyway, I'm very happy with how it turned out in the end. It really does pull, start, you know, that decor, pulling it into the living room. Anyway, all right, I'm going to make a bow first and then I'll come back and we'll do our questions. All right. And this is the ribbon that I'm going to use. Uh, Bobby, by the way, put a little message in my uh, Facebook group this morning. Bobby from perpetualribbons.com put a little Facebook, uh, a little message in my Facebook group that said that she is, uh, for those of you who don't know, she's moved from California to Colorado 
She's been in the process of getting moved in. Her poor sister had an accident, broke an ankle, I believe, and had to have surgery. So she's living with Bobby and recovering there at their house. And it is just, she poor thing, she's been under the gun. So she wrote a, a little message in for my Facebook group this morning just to let them know, hey, I'm coming back. She's thinking Wednesday or Thursday, she's gonna try, the, this week, she's gonna try to get her shop back open. So I encourage you to, you know, keep stopping by there, perpetualribbons.com and see, you know, if she's not back open, if you need any ribbon, perpetualribbons.com. But this is D. Stevens ribbon. This is my beautiful, beautiful blue and white ribbon that I have throughout. And I'm gonna make a tiered bow out of. So let me get my camera turned here and just for a second. So what I wanna do is just pull out a good bit of this ribbon. The reason I don't want to make a funky bow or another kind of bow uh, is because I want to try to save some of this ribbon just in case there's someplace else that I might need it. And since Bobby's not open right now, I want to be able to have this ribbon if I want it because I do have all bows already made throughout the room. So I don't want to uh, make a big old loopy, loopy, loopy bow or even a um, funky bow. So I'm just going to make a sweet tiered bow which will be perfect for right there, you know, at the finial right there on that secretary. So in order to make a tiered bow, I haven't done a bow tutorial in a little while, have I? I wanna find the end of the ribbon. Now see this, this ribbon is just beautiful on both sides. This is wired ribbon. I don't usually make any of my craft bows unless the ribbon out of anything but wired ribbon, y'all. I, I really think it's important. That is if you want your, your loops to hold their shape. If you don't care if they're a little flouncy, then by all means don't, you know, don't use wired ribbon. But I always use wired ribbon. So in order to start the tiered bow is I take the end, I fold it down toward myself. And I there's no measuring with this bow. I just eyeball it. And I want to see, you know, how big I want the first tier to be. I'm going to make a tiered bow, so that means each, I'm going to make two loops here, and then I'm going to make two more loops, and then two more loops, and then two more loops. And I want to picture this to be the smallest loop, and they're going to get a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger as we make the bow, hence it being called a tiered bow. So I fold it over toward myself, and then I'm going to picture and the reason i have my finger here is i'm picturing this to be the size of the one side of the loop and then i'm going to come over this way and i'm going to pull it up and i'm going to overlap you see that i'm going to overlap the ribbon just a little bit and then i'm going to pinch it together this ribbon is thick and beautiful but which also makes it not fun to work with sometimes because it's the thicker. the thicker the ribbon is, the harder it is to work with, but it makes the prettier bows, I think. So, okay, so there we have our first two loops, and they're pretty close to the same size. And then I want to make a center loop next. So I want to twist this ribbon to bring the right side up, and then I'm going to turn, the, I'm going to get my fingers pretty close to my, to my thumb down here, and I'm going to turn this ribbon around those two fingers and catch it underneath, see that? And then I'm gonna accordion that in, catch it with my two fingers underneath, and I'm gonna accordion that in. But now be careful when you do that to make sure that you're going straight across the ribbon. In other words, if you pull the ribbon from this way, you're gonna end up with a loop that's small on the top and then bows out at the bottom. I don't particularly like loops like that, so what I try to do is concentrate and and really make sure that I'm making a loop that is the same on the top and on the bottom. See that? Okay, now, you can see it's come out wrong side up here. Sorry about that. So I wanna twist the ribbon to bring the right side up, and I'm gonna start on my second tier. So what I wanna do is straighten that, that ribbon out, and I wanna take this loop out no, and make it no longer than about a half an inch longer than the loop before it. And I wanna catch it underneath, accordion it together again. And then it's gonna to be fed out 
wrong side. So I want to twist it and come out this side. And again, I want to straighten that out. And I want to, I don't want to make this tear any longer, or this bow any longer than a half an inch longer than the one before it. The loop, excuse me. Okay. So now you can, it doesn't have to be perfect because when you fluff out the bow, you can manipulate the bow size a little bit or the loop size a little bit, but it, it helps if it's close, you know. So then, like I said, I'm gonna do four loops on each side of center. So this is my third loop. Again, I wanna straighten that out and make this one just a little bit, no more than about a half an inch longer than the loop before it. And pinch it underneath. Coming out wrong side, so we wanna twist do the same thing over here. And catch it and accordion it together. Okay, so that gives us three loops on either side of center. Okay, so I want one more loop on each side. So again, I twist, bring it out, no more than about a half an inch longer catch it underneath, accordion it together. And again, it's coming out wrong side, twist and fold it underneath there and catch it. And there we have a lovely four loop is what I call this because it's, it's different than the funky bow. I know I call them all different but this is really an eight loop if you want, uh, eight loop tiered bow. So now I wanna make three tails on it. So I do wanna pull this out a little farther. I don't want them to be super long tails. So I just grab the back of the ribbon. You can see that, you see I grab it by the back and pull it up. And I don't need the tails to be any longer than that. I don't need them hanging down too much in front of the doors. So I do wanna make three. So I grabbed it by the back, twisted it up, pulling it in, and that will make one, two, and then three tails. So let me, then you feed your pipe cleaner under the loop, but over your thumb, and then go to about the midway point and grab it with your thumb, pull the bottom around the bottom, and the top around the top, trying to keep it centered in the bow widthwise too, or I mean this way too, you know. Use this hand that you've been holding the loop shut with as resistance. And get these fingers up that you've been manipulating the bow with as close as you can to the bow and twist. Twist the bow. I sat it right down on the ribbon. <laughs> twist the bow, twist the pipe cleaner. Twist, 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 do many twists. That way it's not gonna come undone with you. So there we go, this kind of looks a mess right now. The first thing I wanna do is cut it off of the, off of the roller ribbon here. So, go about as long as this is. And that leaves me a good bit of this ribbon left over. I'll take my scissors and cut that one big loop that we made in half. And that gives us three Loops. Okay, so first thing I want to do now is I want to fluff it. The most important part about making any bow, even a bow this size, which is not the biggest bow that I make, and this is a very structured bow, you know, but still fluffing is of the utmost importance. And the way I do this, this is very stiff ribbon. Trust me, it will stay wherever I put it when I get it out there. <laughs> okay, I want to make the two side tails shorter than the middle tail. I want to dovetail the middle tail. So I fold it in half and usually I'm the other direction, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut up from the side. And that makes a dovetail like that. Now, I want these side pieces to be a smidge shorter. 
So I'm just eyeballing it again, and I don't want them dovetails. I just want them to be like little accent. Yeah, and I want to try to match over here. Okay. There we go. And that, my friends, is a beautiful tiered bow. And that will, I will use the pipe planer to tie it onto the secretary. And then I'll take you out and show you, I'll well, always show you a picture at the end. I'll show you how it looks at the end of the video. Super pretty, super soft, tiered bow. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little bow tutorial. I haven't done one in a while, so I was a little rusty, I feel like. But there you go. There it is. It's really pretty. So once I get it tied up there, as I said, I'll take a picture of it for you. And you'll see it at the end there. You know, I'll show it to you in place with a picture. A uh, couple of updates for you. Uh, Chris and I are doing, still doing really well with the vaccine. Absolutely no problem at all. You know, I, I don't know what to say other than we just haven't really had any any side effects. And we may, we may absolutely have some with the second shot. And like I keep saying, if we do, you know, we'll do our best to walk through that with grace. And I'll let you know. I'll let you know about everything, you know. So let's see. What else? My nails. My nails. My nails are still doing great. Uh, I have had them on one week, one solid week today. And the only thing I've done is to add a coat of top coat to it every other night. Now, Barbara, my dear friend Barbara, said that she is going to send me, or she sent she sent them out last week, um, like some little hearts for Valentine's Day, like a heart set or something. So when that comes, I'm probably going to go ahead and remove these and put that set on. If you'd like me to do that on camera, let me know, and I'll, I'll be glad to do that for you. Uh, but, well, at least I'll be glad to try it for you. <laughs> and I'll show you how I'm going to plan it on removing these and hopefully it will work, you know. So, uh, but she's, those are on the way in the mail sometime this week. Hopefully they'll arrive. Uh, but I have no doubt I could go two weeks solid with this if I didn't have the urge to change them out and just want to do something different, you know. These, these are lovely. They are absolutely lovely. Also, Barbara has given me the name of a consultant that she's just started to use in the last few days. Uh, and I'm going to put her name in the description, a link for her. And every time I talk about Color Street Nails from now on, you'll find her name in the description. She, uh, you know, is a friend of Barbara's, was a friend of her son's from high school. Uh, you know, I, I would love to support her. I would love to support her. So uh, I, I thought I would give you guys a, a consultant if you didn't have one already of your own and you didn't want to just, you wanted somebody to benefit from, you know, your purchase instead of just buying them off the website, you know. So I'll put her name in the description and her contact information. So or her, I'll give you a link where you can find her. Actually, it'll take you to Color Street and you'll see her name is your as your consultant up like in the left hand top corner if you want to place an order. So there you go. So let me know on that if you wanted me to show you those on, on camera. I'll be glad to do that whenever they come in. Again, though, I have no doubt these would make it all the way through. I mean, you can see that just the very edges of them are, are just worn off. They're not uh, coming unpeeled or anything. They're just kind of worn because I type all the time, like I said. So Anyway, also too, Chris put up my, whoop, look that, isn't that pretty? My sugar and spice and everything nice. And the two pieces on either side of it, doesn't that look pretty? Oh my goodness, I love it. And it is a little different, but boy, does it make a statement up there. I love it. And it pairs beautifully with the rest of the decor in here. So I was super happy with that. So thank you to Chris for doing that. <laughs> All right. So let's get into some questions here. I think I've got five or six questions. Six questions, yes. Number one is from Nelda, Nelda Rust. Uh, such pretty things. I love your blue and white decor. Oh, thank you. Do you use those pretty towels for just decor or do you actually use them for drying dishes and such? Just wondering, it seems when I put mine out for decor, they end up getting used by others that come to our house. 
<laughs> I, I hear ya, I hear ya. Uh, I just have two of those towels, so I'll probably put one here on the, on the oven, and the other one, I'll either put both of them on the oven, or I'll split them up and put one on the oven and one in the powder room. The ones on the oven will not get used. They just, they, they, it's like everybody knows, oh, mom put towels on the oven, those are for decor only. They're not to be touched or used. <laughs> if I put the same towels in the powder room, it's no holds barred. They don't care, they use them in the powder room. All my towels get used, along with the paper towels in the, you know, in the powder room. So it just depends on where they're hanging. Kitchen, they don't touch them because I always have a towel on the counter and they all know where to get the, you know, the extra tea towels, which is right in the drawer to the left of the sink, you know, so. Powder room, have at it, sink, or the oven, don't touch. That's just the way it works over here. <laughs> Number two from Paul Guerra. Hello, I have a question for you, Miss Arlen. Have you ever thought about becoming an interior decorator? Oh, that's so sweet. Your house is so beautiful and tastefully decorated. You have an amazing eye for detail. Well, thank you so much for saying that. Oh my goodness, I, I, that makes me feel so good when people say that they think my house is tastefully decorated. I work really hard to make sure that it is tastefully decorated. Um, and I've honed my skills. I will say I've honed my skills since I've even since I've been on YouTube here. Uh, because I try really hard to, I'm always expanding my, you know, pushing, pushing those walls and, and kind of elbowing myself out of my own box, you know? So I've, I've really tried and worked really hard to, uh, to expand my, my, like I say, my horizons and what I choose. I, I, I take a lot of time to choose my decor, my accent pieces and things like that. I just don't buy willy nilly. I try to really go, you know, buy with a purpose and at least with some thought of where something is gonna go. Uh, I had one lady that gave me a set of questions. I may go back and revisit that, that I answered her in person. I don't think, I I, I think I took her right. I don't think she was being, you know, uh, sarcastic or anyway, but she asked me a couple of questions as if I did, like, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, would I continue to shop? Well, yes, I would, but if I can find those, I will, I will, I'll, I'll do those today or another day. I'll go through those and go ahead and answer them in person. I, I did them. think about becoming a, a, a an interior designer a couple of years ago, I guess, but I, I'll be 60 this year, y'all. I turned 60 in, in 2021 here. And uh, I really don't want to go back to school at this age. I really don't want to. I could, sure I could, but I don't want to, you know? Uh, I'm I'm satisfied with how I uh, decorate. I'm, uh, again, I'm teaching myself all along. I don't have any plans to design anything else for anything, anybody else, you know, uh, unless I'm specifically asked about this or that, you know, I, I, I kind of keep out of people's way in their own homes and that kind of thing, you know, uh, so, but I sure appreciate you saying that the house is beautiful and tastefully decorated. That made my day. To hear that, that made my day. Again, people, you know, there have not been kindnesses thrown my way, you know. Uh, but I do the best I can, you guys. <laughs> okay, number three, Whispers in the Wind Tarot. Uh, do you find yourself eating most of your meals at the island in the kitchen? Or do you and hubby have a sit down in the dining room for meals? <laughs> <laughs> not unless we have company and we don't even sit here at the island we get our tv trays out yes ma'am we get our tv trays out and we eat and watching our favorite television show to be honest with you that's the way we do it we have lunch together and that's where we engage with conversation and talk to one another and spend time with one another and that's why we do lunch out every day so that we don't have any other distractions you know but yep nope we for dinner we usually not unless if we have company then we usually eat at this table you know, or if we have, if I'm serving like a lunch or something and folks just want to sit wherever they want to, they'll sit in here at the, at the island or at the table or in the, wherever, wherever they plop themselves. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, and she had another question, whispers in the wind. I wonder what your first name is. Would you be willing to tell me what your first name is? <laughs> whispers in the wind, Tarot. One more quick uh, question. I'm curious if you leave your fairy lights up all the time or just as you holiday decorate. I love the lights on the staircase. All of my decor lights, you'll see in my home tour. I am gonna do a home tour after I'm finished by blue and white, which should be probably next week sometime. Uh, and you will see all of my, all of the lights on the staircase stay on all the time. I mean, I turn them out at night, but at, you know, when we're in bed, they're off. But when we're here in the house, but when we're here in the house, all of the decor lights stay on. All the lights above the cabinets stay on. The lights on all the garlands, as you can see there behind my my head here, they stay on. The ones at the hutch, they stay on. Up here at the desk, they stay on. You can see back there at the um, dough bowl, they stay on. And um, now they are recharged. You know, we put an external battery in because Chris did, you know, his his rigged up the fairy lights that go in there also too they're all not fairy lights uh there are fairy lights the only place the only place that has fairy lights is right there in that dough bowl right there is for the places that y'all can see right now all the other garlands and the garlands on the steps are brown corded white lights and they are all plugged in to electrical outlets so they are not fairy lights. They are, you know, brown corded white mini lights. So I just wanted to clarify that too. So you didn't think that, excuse me, that I bought all fairy lights. <laughs> that would have been a lot of fairy lights, huh? So, okay. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> all right, number five, Joy Left Wish. Left Wish, Left Wish, Left Wish. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hopefully I got close. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. So happy you're feeling well. Your home is beautiful. It is such a reflection of you and your husband. Oh, thank you. You both put so much love into it. I've heard you say a few times, it's not your forever home. I am wondering why. In your mind, what does your forever home look like? Best wishes and continued health to you. Well, thank you for the question, Joy. Uh, when we first moved in here, and you probably, if you go back to some of my earlier videos, you'll hear me say, they'll have to carry me out of this house. And Chris would say the same thing. We don't feel that way anymore. This house is large. We have a lot of acreage. And we will stay in this house until it starts to tax us physically. Uh, we're not people who will pay people to come and do the lawn or pay people to come and clean the house. When we can't handle that sort of thing ourselves, then we will downsize. And uh, by downsize, I mean we'll probably get a Rambler house with three bedrooms, I would say, enough for the, you know, the kids to stay each in one, in, you know, or put one on a couch and dad in a room or whatever, you know. But um, that's what our for, her, for what our forever home to me looks like a smaller rambler, probably, you know, uh, Chris uh, double car garage or at least one with a, a, a someplace where he can have a workshop because I think he needs a workshop. See, I do all my crafting at my counter. I have no desire. I'm not one of those folks who needs to have a she shed or anything like that. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm not at all. It's just not something that I've ever you know, wanted or needed. I do all of my crafting here at my uh, my island and I like it better that way because that way I can get what I need out and then put it all away and everything's in its place and I don't have, I don't ever, I'm never tempted just to leave something, you know. I'm too much of a clean freak. I like to have things picked up and cleaned up, you know, between um, crafts uh, you know I don't need a, a room like that but Chris does he would need a workshop with his saws and that kind of thing because he does woodworking and he does all the fixing of everything he does all the car maintenance he does all of that stuff so we would need garages and we would need you know uh, at least two, two car garage probably and a, and some place for a workshop for him I don't know whether we'll have a basement most homes in this area do come with basements so we very well might have a basement, uh, but it might need to be a walkout basement so we can get to it a little easier. 
but then that lifts the house up. So I don't know what we'll do. I'd like to be able to walk right out onto a patio, not have to take a, you know, two or three steps to get to it. I'd like to walk right out on it, you know. That would be my goal, is to have a house on level land that we didn't have to worry about steps and that we could live in for the rest of our lives and that it could be easy for us to stay in, you know, and to live in. But this so, house is just too big. We don't need all this house. You know, it's good now because we have Maverick and we have the kids that come and we still will, you know, when we get older, but while we're younger and can entertain and do things like that, then, you know, we're fine with the size, size of a house, but yeah. Okay. Hope that answered your question, Joy. Okay. Number six, Pamela. Hi, Arlen. Thanks for showing us about the new nails and your beautiful home and all of your halls. I was wondering, you mentioned your mother was a school teacher in her career when she was in her career years yes were you a school teacher also what did you do for a job before your children were out and about raised ground uh, out and about and raised i think thank you for all your wonderful videos you and your husband have a beautiful home and family i love your little grandson smiles well thank you so much pamela uh my mom was a school teacher and that was her whole career. She, uh, she retired from teaching and then worked for a place called the Science Center in her county, which was the place where uh, all of the, like when you dissect frogs, she'd get all the frogs and she'd order all the frogs from wherever. And all of the beakers and all of the, you know, things they used in the chemistry classes and that kind of thing. She was very organized, like well, I get that from her, you know. And she did well with that job. I think she worked in that job for about five or six years. And then she, she retired for good, you know. And then dad and when my dad retired, and then they started traveling. They did some traveling, a lot of traveling. Thank goodness they did. Thank goodness they did because then she got sick, you know. Uh, I was not a school teacher. <laughs> I've never worked outside the home to get paid for a paycheck. I have volunteered. Uh, my whole life. When the kids were in school, I was their room mom. Uh, when they got up and into high school, I for seven years, I was the band parents president, uh, which took me to school every single day. I worked 10 to 3 every single day on a volunteer basis. I copied papers. I planned trips. I planned competitions. I ordered things. I, you know, I was like I was an I was employed by the band almost, but I didn't. I got paid in hugs. <laughs> I went to every competition. I went to every, you know, field trip. I went to every every everything. So, uh, and then when the kids were done with school and in college, uh, we had Sam. Well, not right away. Uh, I didn't work for a couple of years. Didn't do anything but just support them when they were in college, and then got Sam. And then when I would go visit my mom in the nursing home, my mom got put in the nursing home, he and I were a therapy team. And uh, did that for several years until he couldn't anymore. He got a little old and rickety. And by that time, I had started my YouTube channel, pretty much, you know. Actually, my mom passed away in 13, and then I passed, and then I, I got my uh, YouTube channel in 16, so... That's it. Yep. I've never really worked outside to get paid. This is one of my most uh, steady paychecks that I've gotten is my YouTube channel. And it's not a very big paycheck. Trust me on that. And what I get, I throw right back into my channel. So, you know, but mostly volunteer. I'm, I'm the volunteer person. <laughs> now, let me go see if I can find those questions. That was the last one, Pamela. Pamela's question was the last one. Let me go into my uh, YouTube studio and see if I can't find that group of questions that I was talking to you about that I had answered her in person. Here it is. This is um, from Kathy Teller. I've got a couple more that I just scrolled by too, but I knew I had this one. I need to put my glasses on to see this because it's not blown up. Hang on. Here are some questions for you. Would you do shopping? And I'm just pretty much going to read to you what I said to her. Uh, and I may expound a little bit. She said, would you do shopping hauls if you did not have a YouTube channel? And I said to her, I obviously wouldn't do videos of my items. 
But yes, I would still be shopping as I am still trying to enhance the decor in our home. You know, I have, I, I feel sure if I was still working on a blue and white decor that I would still be shopping and looking and searching, you know, to augment and to make this decor the way I want it to be in this house. So I feel sure I would still be, obviously I wouldn't be hauling it for anybody, <laughs> but I would be, you know, I would still be purchasing and trying to find things to go in the house, you know, although it would be coming out of our coffers, our family coffers and not my own, you know, so I don't know. Uh, and then she asked two more. She said, if YouTube shut down tomorrow, what would fill your days? I said, I'm sure that I would find another way to engage with folks and try in my own way to help others. And that's what I've always done. And that I think is what I would fall back on. You know, I don't know whether I would become a volunteer at the hospital or what, but I can see myself doing something like that, you know. And then uh, she asked me one more. She said, would your love of decorating be the same for you? And I bet you all can answer this. I can hear you guys saying it right now. And I said, and I said, yes, my love for decorating has spanned the decades. It hasn't gotten more intense with my YouTube channel. It has always been what I love to do the most, except spending time with my family. So there you go. I wanted to bring those two to, to you too, because she did ask those, and I answered. I she answered those or asked those really quick on the video, and I was still sitting at my still sitting at my video at my computer, so I'd answer her right away. So let me see. I know, Arlene, could you tell me the paint? that your paint inside your house. And I thought I would go ahead and answer this too as I'm scrolling and I'll scroll back up to the top and make sure that I've gotten everything. The paint that is on most of the walls in here is perfect grayge, G-R-E-I-G-E. -E, and it is a Sherwin Williams paint color, but we took it to Home Depot and had Home Depot mix it in a paint that had a primer in it so that it was easier to go on our walls. So, but perfect grayge from Sherwin Williams. That was Stardust Girl. This lady, uh, Glenda McLucas, said to me last night, and why did I ever think about this, you guys? Dummy. She said she watched one of my cheesecake recipes, and I've been having trouble because Duncan Hines has changed the amount of cake mix that they put in their boxes. I don't know how many years ago they did this, but they really did. They've changed the, you know, amount of, and my recipe got all messed up. And she, and... <laughs> Uh, with that cake, with that recipe, you make like a crust for the bottom. And my crust, the last five or six times I've made it because they changed the amount of cake mix in the cake box has been gummy almost. And she said, did I ever think of this? No. Could, could you buy an extra cake mix and add some to your original recipe? Then it would be made with the same amount of ingredients. What a date bad I am that I ever thought about doing that, you guys. Yes, Glenda, I could. I could do that. Dummy, you know? <laughs> and then here is uh, a, last, a last question that just came in eight minutes ago. This is from Michelle Puchetti. Uh, where do you store all your goodies from season to season? Do you have a basement storage room? Uh, yes, I do. I have a basement storage room. Actually, it's not a storage room. It's kind of a section of the basement. And Chris has built me shelves, and I keep every... Thing in bins. Uh, he's actually, he built me shelves that hold bins, but then he's also built me shelves where I can take like whole flower arrangements down and set them on the shelves. And um, he's, he's going to be uh, hanging up my wreaths too. I'm going to be going through my wreaths and getting rid of some things. I'm going to start into a big purge here after I'm finished decorating. And I'm going to be getting rid of some stuff. I think I had mentioned that, uh, but anyway, to, to, answer, to finish answering your question, I have uh, all of it separated seasonally and all of my bins are, uh, like all my Christmas bins have like red uh, duct tape on them. And then on the duct tape, I've written what's in, in, in the bin. And I do that every time I pack them up and put them away. So I know exactly what, what I'm, what's in the bins that I'm, pulling out, you know, so I do, I have bins for Christmas. I have bins for fall. Those are my two biggest decorating series. I've got bins for Easter, some for spring. And these are, these two places are the two bins that I'm, that I'm going to go through. Uh, I have bins for parent pioneer woman decor. I did a whole pioneer woman series 
and I'm really don't think that I'm going to be doing that again. And if I do, I would do it differently. So I know there's a lot of things in those bins, like even dishes that I could pull up and incorporate into my everyday dishes. And uh, of things that are another grouping of bins that I want to go through is uh, there, I have them named Red and White Gingham. We hosted a family reunion here. Uh, several years ago, and my theme was mason jars, Gerber daisies, red and white Gerber daisies, and red and white gingham. And I have a, several bins with nothing but that stuff in it, and I know there's stuff that I can pull out of there and incorporate, like I think I have white chargers or red chargers. I've got, you know, all kinds of mason jars. I've got picture frames, red picture frames that I would like to get out so I can get to them. So I don't have to dig through a bin and then get rid of some of the other stuff that I know I'll never use in there again and get rid of it and either donate it or some of it needs to be pitched, you know, and that way I can free up some space downstairs and incorporate and consolidate and downsize a little bit. Since I have this, this basic decor, I know I've got bins of generic, primitive country decor. I probably will not get rid of that stuff yet, but I can see a time that I that I will most likely be purging that stuff too, just because I, I don't wanna get rid of it yet because I don't know if I might wanna go back to it, but I've worked so hard on this blue and white decor to pull it out throughout the whole main level of our home that I don't, and I don't, and I love it so much, I don't see myself pulling away from this too much. Instead, I, I see myself augmenting it, adding to it as the seasons go by. I've really been enjoying doing my decorating this way. And I, I, I it's almost a relief. It's almost a relief to not have to undecorate everything and then decorate everything. Even though I love to decorate, I don't love packing up bins and unpacking bins and labeling bins. That is not fun for me, you know? So anyway, but yes, we have a basement and um, I'm gonna make myself, well, I've got plenty of room down there, but I'm gonna make myself some more and I'm gonna get rid of some stuff. That's what I'm gonna be working on in the weeks to come, so yeah. All right, I made that promise to myself. You know, I made that promise to myself because I've worked so hard in here and I want to keep working toward that end, you know? So that's it, you guys. I think that's it for today. I'm not sure when I'll be back. It may not be till Wednesday because uh, I don't have a ton of uh, decorating to do. Uh, I do have a bit of a haul for you, but it's not too much. Depends on how many questions I get you know, through the night, if I come back with, to answer more questions tomorrow, or if my nails come today, or, you know, I'm not sure if I'll come back on to tomorrow, uh, but well, I'll probably be back on Wednesday with, you know, that haul and maybe another piece of furniture, uh, decorated in there. Maybe I'll do the, uh, a little, a, a tray centerpiece that my mom's, of my mom's silver tray. It's going to be very simple, but maybe I'll do that on camera and, you know, a haul or something like that. I'm not sure. So, but anyway, I also have that other idea for a video that that lady gave me that I could uh, take my dad, my mom, Chris, the girls, and my grandparents and say what they taught me, you know, and how they helped to shape and inform me into what I am today. <laughs> so I think I might work on that later in the week, though. So but anyway, that's it for this one, you guys. So let me just go into my final words and say I hope that all is well with everyone. Thank you all so, 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 so much for all of your positivity, all of your sweet comments. Oh my goodness, I've got the best subbies on the planet, I'm telling you. The best. You guys are the best of the best of the best. And I appreciate every single one of you, every single day. Uh, but let me just say, for those of you who are st struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain. I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around. And I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, 
Y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.